How can you get down to the root cause of your anxiety or depression or OCD or intrusive thoughts a little quicker? You know, I think one of the most damaging things conventional medicine has done in modern psychiatry is convince you that anxiety and depression just exist in the brain. They're just the function of imbalanced chemistry. Certain neurotransmitters just aren't right. They don't even really give you a reason why that is. And that all you do is just take this little pill, these little 20 milligrams, and then you're good. Now, I think this is damaging and honestly, scientifically inaccurate. It's a half truth, but don't worry. In this video, we'll get into a lot more about figuring out the root cause. So let's jump in. Hey guys, I'm Dr. Alex Hine. I'm a board licensed doctor of acupuncture and traditional Chinese medicine and author of the health book, Master of the Day. So let's talk more about the root cause here. So are your mental health problems really mental? You know, if you don't know my story about my own kind of burnout, I had, after a period of working crushing hours for many, many, many years, around 30 or 31, I started developing a lot of severe anxiety. I was having heart palpitations 20, 30 times a day. I lost 15 pounds. And if you look at me, I don't have 15 pounds to lose. I could only sleep three hours per night before waking up with massive anxiety, panic attacks. Like my body was in five alarm fire mode, basically. This whole time I was wondering, you know, how did I, the guy who works out religiously, who eats healthy every day, how did I get so sick? And what I realized was that the constant consequence of pushing myself, the drive to succeed, the drive to do things, to get things done, was really damaging via my nervous system. So while it has been the scariest health crisis of my life because it was so chronic and it was so anxiety inducing, the whole time I wondered, nothing about my mind changed. You know, I wasn't stressing more or worrying more, I was just pushing more. How was it possible that it seemed that my body was generating the symptoms, but not my mind? And yet I was having all of these symptoms of intrusive thoughts, extremely anxious, thoughts of just bad things were going to happen to me all the time. Uh, these, this kind of extreme OCD or addictive, these possessive thoughts even that were scary. But I realized that on the nights when I slept, I didn't have them. The nights when I had severe insomnia, they came up. But nothing about my thinking changed. I could tell it was coming from this pathology, from these stress hormones. And this got me really thinking about what is the connection between the mind and the body. Now this kind of severe nervous system dysregulation is surprisingly not uncommon. And many of us have a lesser degree of it. You may have problems with anxiety or depression, constant gut issues. You may have issues with just chronic fatigue or chronic sleep problems. Now I'm doing a one-time live workshop. I do them like four times a year, once a season, all about the five steps from traditional Chinese medicine to functionally reset your nervous system and adrenals. It's the link right below this video. Again, it's a live workshop. I'll do an hour of material for you guys. We'll do a live Q and A after. And the space is limited because I'm literally paying for software that I only use four times per year. So please join me live. It's gonna be fun, all right? Sign up below, it's gonna be a really good time. So for starters, when we get to the link between the overall health of the body, the organism, and mental health, let's talk about the gut first. Because digestive problems are one of the most common problems I see clinically with patients who come to see me for, let's say, anxiety. So how does this happen? Now there's something called the gut-brain axis. And if we dive deep into digestion, you know, when you look at the gut, it's home to literally trillions of microorganisms, right? And they have all these various functions and there are all these various ratios. When people have gut dysbiosis, so the ratio of certain microorganisms to another have been disrupted, it can cause certain problems. But what are those specific problems? Like if you think you have gut dysbiosis, how does that actually affect the other parts of your body? Now, interesting research shows that imbalances in certain gut microbes that we call dysbiosis can influence your brain health in a number of ways. It can alter neurotransmitter production. It can alter your immune system functioning and can even alter the production of metabolites like short chain fatty acids. Now, when we talk about some of those neurotransmitters, these gut bacteria can produce or modulate alter neurotransmitters, the ones you think of that make you feel good, serotonin, dopamine, it can affect even GABA, and all of these play key roles in your mood regulation. Now what's crazy is that about 90%, 80% of your serotonin is produced in your gut, which has such a clear correlation with mental health diagnoses like depression and anxiety. Now let's talk about two of the main organ networks that I see that are the most correlated with mental health issues. So let's go to the spleen pancreas first. I would highly recommend 
downloading this quiz if you guys haven't already. It should be somewhere under this video. 12 pages, really in-depth, hundreds of symptoms you can sort of quiz yourself on. When we say someone has a spleen pancreas issue, the main textbook diagnostic criteria typically is abdominal bloating or a food baby after meals, food allergies. So people like this tend to be picky eaters. They have food sensitivities. A lot of the time they even just eat the same foods because everything upsets their digestion. Low appetite or they get energy only when they're constantly eating. Typically you get pale complexion like me. They tend to lose weight under stress or when their GI flares up. They tend to get heaviness overall, undigested food in their stools. For women, they can get discharge or issues with yeast. Lots of people also get nausea or chronic throat clearing. What's interesting is that when we look at like, for example, three or four of the main herbs we use for this pattern, for example, there's a formula called Sejunzetang, four gentlemen decoction, ginseng, an herb called fuling, poria, baiju, which is attractylodes, and then it has licorice, gansal, or dragansal. So three of these herbs literally have an effect on physiological pathways that can cause anxiety or depression. You know, in traditional Chinese medicine, for women and their hormonal issues related to cycle regulation or painful menses, it sounds weird, but we're often treating the liver and the kidneys. The liver and the kidneys are two of the organs that relate to blood generation. Clinically, what that often means is hormone regulation. Let's talk about hormones for a second though, and the role that they play in for example, feeling clinically depressed. For example, the hormonal changes during the menstrual cycle, particularly estrogen and progesterone, are really key in mood regulation. So for example, estrogen has a huge impact on serotonin, one of the main neurotransmitters related to mood regulation. And lower levels of estrogen during certain phases of your menstrual cycle are associated with greater symptoms of anxiety and depression. I know every woman watching this video knows that to be true, but sometimes it's interesting to hear the science behind why that is true. Now, a 2019 study published in Women's Health, for example, found that women with a history of mood disorders experienced a worsening of those symptoms, anxiety and depression, during the luteal phase of their menstrual cycle. Now, this phase is marked by a sharp decline in estrogen and progesterone, which is contributing to the mood dysregulation. Now, when we're talking about the liver, we're talking about traditional Chinese medicine and how it views the liver's role in what we say storing blood. When you look at a cluster of these symptoms, you look at irregular menses, breast tenderness, migraines, headaches, alternating stools, chronic sinus infections, chronic UTIs, rashes. Lots of these symptoms are not just digestive, but lots of them are hormonal or even inflammatory in nature. If you look at like traditional Chinese medicine formulas that affect the liver, they are often related to hormones in nature. The other thing we treat is the kidneys. A lot of the time, when we treat the kidneys, we're treating the adrenals, we're treating the interface between the body and the brain, right? The HPA axis and chronic fatigue, anxiety symptoms, palpitations, autoimmune disease, hot flashes, severe depression, infertility, impotence, sexual dysfunction, uterine prolapse. A lot of these symptoms, if you go to your PCP or your gynecologist or urologist, they'll tell you, these are hormone related, sex hormone related. This is sometimes translating East versus West, but this is an ancient medicine that describes things differently than we would today. But the modern research supports that it works. It's just different language. Check these out, take the quiz, because you might find, for example, even if you never do traditional Chinese medicine, you do one of the diets we have in our videos here on the spleen, and your anxiety symptoms get better, or depression symptoms get better, or you sleep better. Then you have an insight that was not so logical and not so rational that actually helped you quite a lot. And you might find that taking some of the formulas relating to liver function from a traditional Chinese medicine point of view, regulate your cycle and regulate your mood. Or you're taking a kidney formula and the treatment of your adrenals or the sex hormones ends up regulating your mood. No more depression or less depression. So check these out. Take the quiz, I think it'll help a lot. Now don't forget guys, I work with a limited number of new patients every single month in my clinic in Los Angeles or virtually via telemedicine. You can go to dralexhine.com forward slash clinic to learn more. We also put our phone number and the clinic email and contact info in the description box of this video below. So check that out if you guys would like to reach out to work one-on-one. -on -one. And then don't forget, I'm doing that time limited workshop in a couple weeks here. Sign up because the space is limited. You can come ask me any question you want. It's gonna be fun and I only do a couple per year. So make sure you sign up. I would love to see you there live and I will see you soon.